Hello, Mohamed Esfi from Martila, and today we're looking at a special feature that is very helpful, especially for beginners, which we call the recorder <coughs> or the actions auto recorder. What we will cover today uh, in very quick steps is that first we will talk about what it is. Second, I'll give you a very quick demo of what it can do. And then the next three points, I will show you how to actually do uh, a couple of uh, auto recordings. The first one, uh, login steps. Uh, th the second uh, automation recorder that we will look at is how you do a Google search and you record it. Uh, the third automation that we will show you being done with the recorder uh, is actually an advantage or, or a fee uh, an additional feature is that you can use the recorder to find a CSS element that otherwise Artila would not have found. And finally, we will show you some good practice on how you can organize and um, and put all your uh, automation blocks that were recorded into a folder. So let's talk about point one, a uh, quick definition. Yes, so the auto recorder is probably one of the most easiest way, uh, ways to start uh, automation. So, or also it's a good tool for those who are lazy like me and who do not want to create the blocks one by one. Uh, it's a nice way to actually record what you're doing with your mouse and your keyboard. Uh, and then uh, Artila will automatically create all the necessary blocks uh, that will be actually reproduced on your behalf. So I will show you how it works. It's just uh, as simple as starting the recorder, doing your stuff, uh, stopping the recorder and then playing it again. But let's look at point two, some quick demos. Now that we know what it does, uh, I'll show you, uh, I will run uh, some automations that I have just recorded uh, just a few minutes ago. Okay, I'm in my projects and I have three projects that I created using the auto recorder. So let's look first at uh, the AppSumo. Uh, so what I did for AppSumo, I moved my camera right here. Uh, to play it. So I just recorded the steps to login. So let's run it and see how it looks like. All right, so first it has to load, finish loading the page. And then what it recorded is that you can see that it's resizing the window because um, it was on a smaller window when I did it. And if I move my camera right now, you can see that it typed my login, then it scrolled down to the password area and then it's typing the password and then he clicked on the bottom processing and that's it I didn't code I didn't select any block this was all done um, with the Artila recorder and if I do uh, a second demo right here let's look at a Google search so again I recorded myself doing a Google search let's run it So again, you see here, it starts typing in a human way, artila.com, and then it's gonna hit uh, enter, and then we get the search results. So this is very simple, but then it was recorded. I didn't type anything. I didn't select any block, let's say. A third one is actually a website where I wanted to go through all the sizes of a jeans, of a pair of jeans. Um, and as you can see, it's going to load that, uh, that, uh, this is, I think it's a, it's a Shopify website and this particular product has so many sizes and you can see here that it's looping through the different sizes of this particular pair of jeans. Um, and the way that, uh, I could find this locator, uh, was using actually the recorder and that's what I wanted to show you. So it's actually now, uh, the, the final automation is that it's going through all the sizes and it's saving all the sizes here one by one uh, for us to, to do some work later. So these were the quick demos of the results. So point two is done. Uh, and now uh, what I will share with you is how actually to build it. Let's go uh, through that very quickly. All right, so a quick demo of how I built uh, point three, which is the login steps to AppSumo. So let's, uh, uh, let's do it from scratch. 
let's create a new project. I'm going to move my camera to, to this corner. So I do a quick start. I want to go to AppSumo. And here we are on the uh, AppSumo page. So you have a few options that you could do to ease your way. You can disable the inspection panel because we don't need it when we're doing it automation. So which gives you uh, a larger screen to work with. Um, and then it's as simple as this. You see here at the bottom right, there is the start recorder. And once I start recording, it will show as a stop recorder so that I can stop my automation. So let's go. I click start recorder. Now it's it's on. I'm going to click on login button and you can see on the right the blocks being created. I go, I click inside the email field. It recorded a couple of steps. I'm going to type my email to login. And then I'm going to go into the password area. I'm pasting my password and then I'm clicking on login. And I'm waiting for the page to basically load. OK, I'm in. And even the waiting step was recorded. Every mouse is recorded, every mouse movement. If I continue move, moving, it records every single uh, mouse movement. So now I'm uh, satisfied. I stop the recorder. And I got my program. And I can show you how it works. So if I log out from here, I save this. So there is like maybe a dozen of, of uh, recorded steps. And if I go now, and now I go back, this is what I just created, what I just recorded, and I'm going to run it. So you will see that it will resize again the screen because uh, when I was doing a recording, it was a different uh, screen size. and. It's repeating what I have done. So it's going to click into the email field, as you can see. Even the hovering of the mouse, you can see the cursor is moving. And then it goes to the password. It clicks processing. And I have logged in automatically uh, just using the recorder. So that was 4.3, uh, recording a series of login steps. It's the same for any uh, website that you want to log in into. Now let's look at point four, which is how to re how I can how I did the, the Google search recording. Okay, so here also we will start uh, from scratch, new project, quick start, and it's already going to Google by default. I hit start; it's going to lo load Google. Um, and here again, I'm not going to disable any uh, panel. I'm going to start straight away recording. So I click start recorder. I go to the search field and I want to search for artila.com and, and pay attention. Actually, what I'm doing here is that I'm typing artila.com and then I'm hitting enter and it's recording that uh, keyboard entry, as you can see here on the right. So I, I search, I got the page result. I can stop my recorder and maybe what I can do is I just wait. I just add the wait time a little bit so that when I run it, we can see the What's going on? And if you don't want to, to see the resizing of the window, you can just delete this change page size. We save it. And let's run it now. And now let's run this uh, recorded automation. So it's here. I run it. And it's going to search for me for Artila on uh, Google. OK, once it's loaded, it goes there and then it's going to hit enter. So it typed artila.com. It's going to hit the enter key. And that's it. I got the results. And you can see that it reproduced my steps. So that was for point four, uh, recording a Google search action. Point five, which is a particular case, uh, I'm going to use. I'm going to show you how I use the recorder to actually find the CSS locator that was difficult for me to find. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I build it on that uh, jeans uh, product website. OK, so let's start this one also from scratch. I copied the URL of that uh, website where the jeans are. And I'm just going to quick start. I paste the URL of that website right here. I click start. It's going to take a few seconds to load. I accept all these things. 
I accept this. And now what I'm going to do is that you see here, I'm going to first show you the problem. The problem is that I want to go through the uh, drop down right here, which has so many sizes. And for each size, the stock is different or maybe it's not available. So normally you what you do is that you look for a drop down command. And then when I click on the CSS selector here, uh, I want to click it here, but you can see that it's not catching it. It's not catching it because there's different layers to it. And even if I try like this, it's not able to get it. So this is the problem. Yeah. So no problem. The problem can be resolved is that instead of trying to catch it in this way, I'm going to use the recorder to, to find out that particular selector. So let's kick the recording here, start recorder. And then what I do is that just like I do naturally, I go into that drop down. You can see that it clicked, uh, it recorded click on element, and I'm going to select one value, like anyone. Now I stop the recorder. Now when I go back here, the click on element, you see here, it finds the right CSS selector. So what I do now is that I will copy this locator, and now I can go back, delete everything if I wish so. I go back to my drop down command and this time I'm going to paste that CSS selector. Puff, now it catches it. And now in another video, we will show you how you can iterate uh, through all the values. But this is the way that you can use the auto recorder to find CSS selectors. Okay, so that was for uh, finding the CSS selector with the recorder. Uh, it's pretty useful and it complements the other tutorial we did with uh, the tools. Uh, the browser tools and the browser extensions to find CSS locators. This is one more way to easily find some CSS elements. Uh, and then we're going to finish this, uh, this tutorial and this feature coverage with um, a, a good practice because it can get very messy with very fast, very messy with the uh, recorder as it records every single step. So let me show you how to get it neat and well organized. Okay, so I'm back on uh, the uh, AppSumo login uh, automation <clears throat> and the recorder had already created, like we said, about a dozen of blocks, but not all of them are needed for this automation to run. Uh, so the first, but the first thing before cleaning up is that what you may want to do is that you may want to create a, uh, a folder command so a folder command is really uh, what it means. It's a folder uh, in which you can throw, throw a lot of commands. And then I can go here and just throw back every little command. But of course, you have to keep the sequence correct. Uh, whatever comes in first and then what follows. Uh, if you do a mistake while, while moving the, the elements here, it may break your, um, your automation. And, and as you can see, when you have a lot of elements to deal with, uh, the risks of errors uh, are, are high. Uh, so that's the second step that I want to show you is that maybe you don't need the change page size. So we can remove it. Uh, sometimes you need that page uh, change size because Artila uses location uh, to, 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 to work out a click or a selection. So uh, if it doesn't work, then just keep the change page size. Otherwise, you can remove it. And also the hover mouse elements uh, are not necessary to run uh, an automation unless you want to keep that human aspect of stuff moving left and right, that the mouse is moving and that it's really a human behavior. You could keep those uh, hover mouse elements. But otherwise, if it's not uh, making your automation block, then you can get rid of every uh, hover that you see here. You keep the click on elements, you keep the populate elements, but all the hover, I will remove them. And now I have something that is a little bit more clean. And the weight navigation is actually useful. You may change it a little bit because I clicked on an element and then you waited for it. So you see, you see here that uh, Artila is creating a reasonable amount of, of elements and everything that actually is needed for this automation to, to be run again. Once you clean up and you put in the folder and then you want to continue on your way doing other stuff on this website, you can actually uh, just click the little eye here and hide the whole mess 
and now go on and, and do some other things. So that will allow you to really have uh, a very clean, a very uh, streamlined uh, command panel when you put everything into a command folder. And that's it for today. We've seen that uh, the last step was to organize and, and, and clean up a little bit uh, your automation blocks that were created by the recorder. But I hope that this uh, tutorial and this feature coverage on the auto recorder can, can show you that it's actually not that difficult to start using Artila and start automation. Um, and we will cover some much more subjects and some more advanced things in the next tutorials and next videos. Thank you again for today.